Okay, it's time to begin. I'm sorry I had some problems with my Zoom, but we are still on time. It is my great pleasure to introduce Christian Vogt, who often was a speaker of our non geometry seminar. And Christian, the floor is all yours. It's a very exciting topic of quantum graphs and related quantum configure algebras. It's all yours, take it away. Thanks very much. And uh, yeah, it's of course nice to, to speak here. And the seminar is called North Atlantic Seminar, right? Right, so, because because we have participants from the US. Yes. Yeah, but I think also North Atlantic, that fits very well with uh, Scotland and Glasgow. That's exactly where I'm Where you are. <laughs> so, um, yeah. That's but perfect. you have a participant from, California, from the Pacific Coast. Oh. That's right. <laughs> 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 that's true, Mark. <laughs> And, and, and also, the Northern Hemisphere. Exactly. Well, not quite, because the last time we had uh, um, um, uh, Cortinas yeah. from Buenos Aires. So, you know, okay. actually, the, the, the name should be maybe global. But uh, anyway, that which is rose under other name would smell as sweet. Right. So um, what I want to talk about is, is a joint uh, project with Mike Brannan. Uh, uh, Carrie Eifler and Moritz uh, Weber. Um, and uh, this basically started um, last year when I uh, was visiting Moritz in Saarbrücken and we went to an Oberwolfach workshop, uh, which both Mike and Carrie attended. And um, um, yeah, so we started discussing about quantum graphs and um, the possibility whether one could associate c algebras to them. And um, well, the answer is basically yes, that, that's in a sense uh, my talk in a nutshell. Um, but the interesting thing or what, what I find interesting about it is not so much that you can define c algebras, a certain class of c algebras, uh, but there is some intriguing um, facts which, um, yeah, I still, find kind of uh, miraculous about about the construction and uh, also things which we don't quite understand. Um, and I think there is a lot more to be explored uh, in this in this direction. So um, yeah, but I'll tell you what what um, we know um, up to this point. Uh, there is a paper on the archive. Uh, I think we put it out in September. So if you want to to uh, read more about the details. Um, Amazing. Okay, so um, let's see. I, I right, so what I want to do in my like talk is uh, basically the first half or so is to tell you a little bit about uh, quantum graphs. Um, so what quantum graphs are and um, why they might be interesting to study. And um, so I'm, I'm sorry, there, there seems to be somebody with- Yeah, I, I'm, I'm muting, I'm, I'm, I'm muting, right? Okay. okay, that would be great. Thanks. Um, and yeah, and then I'll tell you how one can associate um, c algebras to quantum graphs, and that is uh, motivated uh, by the construction of, of Kunz-Krieger algebras, very classical construction of operator algebras. And yeah, I'll illustrate all that with a couple of examples um, so that I hope that you will get an idea of, yeah, a flavor of, of uh, what these, what these uh, things are. Okay, so, Let's see. Um, I think I'll start off by just setting the stage, uh, in a sense, the classical analog of um, of this notion of quantum graphs that that I'll present you uh, shortly. And uh, so let's let's quickly have a look at uh, the setting. Um, we'll be interested in finite directed graphs in this talk. So um, yeah, given by uh, finite sets E0 and E1, vertices and edges. 
and uh, source and range maps, S and R, and um, yeah, uh, an edge goes from its source to its range. And I've put uh, an example here at the bottom of this slide. Um, so four, uh, four vertices and five edges, I guess. Um, and uh, here and also for the rest of this talk, uh, I will always assume that uh, my graphs are simple so that there are no multiple edges between vertices. So um, what is allowed is that you have in a sense uh, an edge going one way and an edge going the other way between two vertices. So we're, as I said, we're working in the directed setting. Uh, all graphs will be directed in this talk. Uh, but we wouldn't want several edges uh, a, yeah, in the same direction between any two vertices. Not even finitely many, just one. No, just one. Um, yeah, uh, what is allowed is that you have uh, an edge connecting a vertex with itself. That is okay, um, mm -hmm. but not um, uh, yeah, more than one. And okay, I'll probably. So Kuhn's algebras are excluded, right? So we. Uh, no, <laughs> in a sense, it's a very natural question. If you're if you're familiar with with graph algebras, of course, there, uh, one would allow uh, graphs with multiple edges, and uh, maybe I can say more about this later on. Basically, mm -hmm. the the uh, point is that uh, the graphs here will will play the role of line graphs of graphs appearing in the definition of graph algebras. So, um, and if you have a graph with multiple edges, no matter uh, how many edges and in which way, the line graph of such a graph is always a simple graph. And it turns out that the definition of the graph algebra only depends on the line graph really and uh, in a sense, that's what we are doing here. We, we ignore the original graph, but we pass to the line graph originally. Um, so- um, will, will you explain these line graphs later on? Uh, I'm not sure I have put that on, on the slides, but I can say it in words. Um, mm -hmm. So if you have a, a directed graph, mm -hmm. um, well, as I put here, yes. then the line graph would have as vertices the edges of the original graph. Mm -hmm. And uh, there would be an edge. So now I have to, I mean, it's difficult to, to yeah, say yeah. an edge between edges of the original graph, if and only uh -huh. if the source of the second one meets the target of or the range of the first one in a in a vertex uh -huh. so so it's like 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 we're having a path uh yeah it, yeah it is so, the, it is a way of passing from the matrices uh, considered by Kunz and krieger which only had ones and zeros to uh, usual graphs i mean it, 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 some people call it uh, the maximal, uh, I don't remember if out or in split okay. uh, graph. And the, the David Pass algebra is isomorphic yeah. to the original one, and so the, the, the sister algebra must be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, yeah, basically the reason for us to stick with uh, simple graphs will hopefully become a little, uh, become clearer a little bit later. Um, uh, one one it, uh, important point is that if you're looking at simple graphs, then you can encode the uh, the edges as being a subset of um, of just the Cartesian product of E zero cross E zero of the set of vertices um, mm -hmm. with itself, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. that is going to be uh, important when we come to quantum graphs. So at least at the moment, um, there is no good um, definition of quantum graphs, as far as I know, where you would allow multiple um, edges 
Um, so yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, so that's uh, maybe jumping ahead a little. Anyway, um, so let's see. So this is this is our graphs anyway, and um, now the adjacency matrix of um, the graph is the zero one matrix uh, given by the following prescription. Um, so you put one. Uh, so it's the uh, matrix indexed by the vertices of our graph. So I've put that M sub E zero. This will appear again um, uh, later on this notation. So just a matrix indexed by this set E zero uh, of vertices and um, the entry A V W is one if and only if uh, V W is an edge. And here I'm already using that. Yes. I can view the edges as uh, being encoded by a subset of E0 cross E0, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so in, in this example on the previous slide, just to illustrate this, that's what you would get um, uh, for the adjacency matrix. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so let's um, see now, um, how, how do we make this uh, non-commutative? Um, so how can one try to generalize to so-called quantum graphs? And uh, the first step is to rewrite um, finite graphs in a slightly more algebraic way. Um, and then in the second step, we will relax, uh, in a sense, commutativity, and then we will arrive at the notion of a quantum graph. So that's the plan. Mm -hmm. And um, here is uh, how, this, how this is done. So first step is to replace the set of edges uh, by the corresponding finite dimensional C star algebra functions on this finite set. And uh, I'll write P, V for the standard projections uh, mm -hmm. in this C star algebra. Um, this algebra, well, it, it's just it's just C to the N. I mean, a very simple thing. Um, uh, and there is a, a canonical choice for a, a trace on this, um, just pick the uniform measure. So basically that's what we're doing here. Um, we pick the state corresponding to the uniform measure. Um, in a sense, okay, probably this, yeah, uh, the way I've written this here, here is perhaps a bit more complicated than need be, but later on um, it will be convenient to, to view, uh, view this as uh, being the induced state from the canonical trace on the endomorphisms of B. So just, uh, yeah, letting act B on itself by multiplication, and then this embeds B into the endomorphisms, and there you have a canonical trace, and you just restrict that to B. Okay, then uh, once we have that in place, we can do the GNS construction. And, so, so, um, so right now B is like all matrices n by n and, and B sits like diagonal matrices inside, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, you, I guess you can, yeah, if you. Okay. Um, okay, then, uh, okay, you do the GNS, con well, GNS construction is, is uh, trivial here. It, it, there's no completion involved. It's all finite dimensional. So you just view B also as a Hilbert space. Um, by using this uh, trace state. And uh, the reason why we want to uh, use this or why we need this additional structure will become apparent in a second. Uh, in any case, we can encode the adjacency matrix then as a linear operator um, on this Hilbert space just by, by using this, this formula. It's just a matrix, um, if you like, indexed by the, the verdict set anyway. So um, yeah, that's that gives us an operator like this. Okay, so far, uh, so good. Um, so we have um, replaced 
they said E0 with, with an algebra, that's good. So I guess you, you will already uh, yeah, not be surprised how this is gonna be generalized to the non-commutative setting. We will um, uh, replace this commutative algebra with just some finite dimensional c star algebra. Um, but before we can do this, we need to understand a bit better um, what the char characteristic property of the adjacency matrix is in this picture. So how can we encode this entirely in terms of um, the algebra and the state, basically? And um, that's, that's what I want to discuss next. Um, and here it goes. So uh, the matrix A uh, is a zero one matrix. And uh, well, as such, um, any such zero one matrix is the adjacency matrix of a uniquely determined graph on the vertex set E zero. And of course, being a zero one matrix uh, is the same thing as being an idempotent with respect to sure multiplication. So pointwise um, matrix multiplication. So just multiplying the entries in a matrix pointwise. And um, it turns out that this is a good uh, candidate for um, making things uh, or for generalizing um, this concept. So using the sure product and um, let me explain this. <clears throat> so uh, we have our finite dimensional C star algebra B commutative for the time being. And um, well, this comes with the multiplication map, which I'll denote by M. And since we have turned things into Hilbert spaces, there is also an adjoint. And I can see there is a comment. Um, I don't know, but I can't read the comment. Let me try to see. Uh, that was just from, from me, like, uh, like in the previous slide, it said E0 set of edges. And I guess it was just like a type of like set of vertices. Uh, Can you hear me? Yes, set of vertices. Did I say anything wrong? Set of edges, I think it was written. Oh, that could well be. Uh, Replace the set E0 of edges. Yes, that is yes, vertices. That's a typo. Sorry. That's a typo. Like, sorry, like, sorry, sorry, sorry. You said it correctly, though. Yeah. Correct, though, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, E0 are the vertices. Okay. Um, Right, the edges are encoded by this matrix. Um, yes. Right, so let's go back here. Um, and here I have B with a double meaning because here B stands for bounded on L2 of B, right? Yes, indeed. Um, that is unfortunate, but um, that's it's just, okay. just what it is. It's better than writing L of L2. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, so, okay, the reason why we have, or we have put a Hilbert space structure on our B and uh, what we can do then is to look at the adjoint of the multiplication map. And um, well, it's easy to check that what you get explicitly in, in, in this case is uh, this formula M star of one of the generating projections is basically PV tensor PV, but you have to scale this by the dimension of, of B. And once you once you have this formula, it's easy to see that the sure product can be written in terms of m and m star in, in this way. So whenever you have two matrices x and y, then the sure product looks like, like this. And uh, being an adjacency matrix means being idempotent with respect to sure product. So being an adjacency matrix is just uh, given by this formula at the bottom of of the screen. Okay, and uh, with that in place, um, I guess it's clear what we are going to do. Um, so here's the definition of a quantum graph. Um, and uh, okay, we start with a finite dimensional C star algebra. Um, we pick the, the well, I'll, I'll call it the canonical tracial state. I mean, that, that's maybe uh, debatable, but at least the one state which comes from uh, the normalized trace on the endomorphisms of B. 
Um, and then we uh, require that there is a linear operator, um, so-called quantum adjacency matrix, satisfying this, um, in a sense, sure idempotent relation. And um, that's what I will mean by a quantum graph in this talk. I should say that this, this uh, notion has a bit of history and the definition here, uh, yeah, goes back to, to work of Musto, Reuter and Verdon. And in the way it's stated here, more closely to uh, uh, the seven author paper, um, internally also these authors refer to as the glorious seven. Um, so they, um, they studied um, quantum automorphisms um, of graphs and uh, also yeah, introduced a notion of uh, quantum graph there. The, the details in, in these papers are slightly different because um, uh, there are various variations you can do. I mean, basically they work with undirected graphs and um, uh, yeah, some other minor differences but essentially um, the idea is, is uh, the same as in these papers. So, um, right. And if you like the, what's happening here, the only thing which is happening is that we replace uh, the points of our classical graphs with matrix algebras, um, matrix blocks. Okay. Um, and well, by what I said on the previous slide, um, we see that a quantum graph in, in this sense with B commutative uh, is the same thing as a finite directed simple graph. So that's just summarizing um, the argument on the previous slide. So um, yeah, um, now, the question is, what do we get if we allow some non-commutative c star algebras? And um, <clears throat> here are some examples. So let's consider, I will give you, uh, I think, three examples uh, here, um, just to give you an idea of what's, well, some, some examples at least. Uh, first one, is uh, what I'll call the complete quantum graph on uh, the C star algebra B. Um, and okay, so notice here the psi is always fixed in, in the setting on the previous slide. So there's no choice here. I've picked the, the natural trace um, on B. Uh, the only extra ingredient here is uh, this adjacency matrix, quantum adjacency matrix and um, uh, it's given by, so for the complete quantum graph, we just pick uh, this formula A of X equals dimension of B times Psi of X times one. So, and if you like, if you pick B to be commutative, then this would just reproduce the all one matrix, which is the, the complete uh, directed graph on, on uh, well, the corresponding number of vertices. And maybe just uh, to make a remark here, if you think in terms of um, graph algebras and directed graphs there, um, if you pick the graph with one vertex and N self loops, then the line graph of that, coming back to what I said earlier, would just be this complete graph on the number of edges, I mean, N edges, then you get the N by N matrix with, with entries one. So um, the Kunz algebra will be encoded by, by complete quantum graphs in our setting. But I'll say more about this uh, a little later. Guillermo, uh, do you have a question? Because I see that- uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, do you have um, a generators and relations picture uh, in this particular case? Eh? Yes. Um, so you mean for, for these algebras? I mean, at least in, in this particular case of when the, the, the A is this one. For, for, the, for this uh, Kunz-Krieg yeah. algebra yet to be defined? Yes, yes. 
No, I don't know, but I mean, uh, there is, uh, okay, so this is the graph. It's not this is the just algebra. a graph. This is not the algebra. Okay. The, I mean, the algebra here is, is just a finite dimensional yeah. C-star algebra. There's nothing, nothing interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, uh, but we'll come to that. Um, the second example would be the trivial quantum graph, um, where you just pick the identity map. And um, yeah, so this is, uh, yeah, if you like, okay. I mean, this would correspond classically, I guess, to, uh, to a graph with uh, self loops. So it's maybe not completely trivial, but in this business, um, adding or removing these self loops is, is uh, yeah, you can always arrange this um, going back and forth. So one could also think of this as being encoding the graph with no edges at all. So, well. So, so I should imagine it uh, for B commutative, right? I should imagine it uh, that I have N vertices and there is a loop, one single loop attached to every vertex. At each vertex, there is there a, a self loop. Self loop, yeah. that's okay. right. Christian, uh, can yes. you hear me? Yes. Um, like question, like uh, if we have got like uh, for B, something like C0 of uh, just like a direct discrete set mm -hmm. is uh, every quantum graph over this C star algebra um, a classical graph or? Yes, yes. So okay. there is nothing, nothing more in a sense. Okay. That's right. Yeah, I didn't say that, I guess, but um, yeah. Um, right, and here is another one. Um, so if you do something slightly more general, I mean, just write your B as a sum of matrix algebras and pick a diagonal or a direct sum of diagonal matrices, then you can also cook up uh, an adjacency matrix and there is just <coughs> one condition on the trace of these diagonal matrices. So there's plenty of things you can, you can play around with. Um, uh, to get more examples. Actually, I'll, I'll say more about uh, examples uh, uh, in, a, in a minute, um, but okay. So these are just a few basic, basic things you can do. Um, yeah, let me, let me come back to, um, yeah, discussing the definition a bit more from a slightly different point of view, um, which was the, original uh, point of view, in fact. Um, and uh, so I'm not, I'm not exactly familiar with, with the precise uh, story here, but um, this, what I'm going to tell you here, goes back to work of Weaver. And uh, they were studying uh, quantum relations uh, in connection with uh, quantum error connection. Uh, correction, um, and not exactly in the way I've I've stated this here, but in a sense, what I've written here is a special case of what uh, Weaver uh, would have uh, considered very special case. Um, okay, and the idea is that uh, a simple graph is uh, encoded completely in terms of the edge relation, so we just have to uh, specify um, a subset of e zero cross e zero given by the edges. And um, um, then we can build uh, a subspace uh, in the bounded operators on L2 of E0, uh, given by the corresponding rank one um, operators. And um, then one can, in a sense, uh, flip things around. Uh, so this subspace is naturally going to be a bimodule over uh, functions on uh, e zero, and then you can flip things around and say, well, if we have a finite dimensional Hilbert space and some C star algebra embedded into B of H, so the way to think about it would be here uh, that H is L two of E zero, and the algebra would be C functions on E zero. Um, then a quantum graph is uh, just a, a bimodule over the commutant of of the algebra. Okay. 
and um, yeah, I Christian, guess. Yeah. Can I ask? Uh, this seems to encode uh, an, an undirected graph because it's an operator system, right? Um, mm, well, I guess you have the. So or is not, it just the subspace? Self it's not. It's not self-adjoint. So I'm not. I'm not. Okay. Um, Oh, yeah, in answer, but not necessarily. It's generated by, by EVW, and that implies a choice of order, right? So Yeah, so I'm not requiring that, that this is a closed undertaking star. Um, okay, I was confused so by the uh, letter S. So B prime is the commutant. The commutant. commutant. It's yes. not the dual or anything. No, like okay. no, the commutant in, in this representation. On... And Christian, wouldn't this point of view be close to talking on correspondences and, and all these Kunz-Pimsner algebras later on? Um... When I see, you know, instead of a graph, I see some bimodule and the Hilbert space, it smells to me like this C-star correspondence. But it's not the bimodule over the, the, the B. Ah, yeah. yes, it's over B prime. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, take it back. Yeah. Let's see. So let's let me first explain uh, how this is connected with uh, what I told you. Um, so let's assume we are in the setting. We we take a finite dimensional Hilbert space and uh, some C star algebra inside uh, matrices on well based on this H. Um, so one way to produce uh, B primed bi modules is to take an idempotent in B tensor B op and just let that act on uh, B of H by well, multiplication, if you like. So um, yeah, that gives you certainly um, a bimodule. And mm -hmm. um, now such an idempotent is basically the same thing as a quantum adjacency matrix. So, and now uh, since I have to be careful. I mean, my Polish is non-existent, so I couldn't even pronounce. Um, well, I, there seems to be a typo. So before yes, Alex there's complains, typo. there seems to be a typo. It should be M-I-O, then it's Yamiolkovsky. Otherwise, even oh. I cannot pronounce it. <laughs> OK, I'm sorry. When I, I, yeah. And, and how would you pronounce it correctly? Yamiolkovsky. Yamiolkovsky, OK. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so there is this this uh, connection, and uh, in other words, what what this um, what this tells us is that quantum adjacency matrix matrices are the same thing as direct sum decompositions of uh, B of H as B primed bi modules, um, because um, such an idempotent corresponds to a direct sum uh, decomposition. And um, now if you pick, for instance, uh, MNC acting on C to the N, then B prime would just be the complex numbers. And you would really be looking at direct sum decompositions of vectors, uh, vector space, direct sum decompositions of, of matrices. So there's plenty. There is a lot of things you can do there. Um, and in particular, a lot of things which will not come from classical graphs. Um, Sorry, Christian, are you saying that any bimodule is of its form? Uh, for, for you have finite terms of yes. algebra, and uh, so you are saying that any bimodule is given by yeah. an important like this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fine. Okay. So, um, yeah, basically, this, this tells us that, that this picture in terms of uh, operator by modules is is more or less equivalent to to what I told you um, earlier now uh, where do these quantum graphs appear um, well so the reason why I got interested is because they appear in the so-called graph isomorphism game and the study of quantum symmetry groups of graphs and uh, so maybe I'll say a little bit more about this um, at the end, but when you study monoidal equivalences, 
uh, even if you're just interested in ordinary graphs, it's very natural to also allow quantum graphs to understand the picture better. So um, that's one, one source. And then they also appear in quantum information theory. So I've written a few keywords here, um, but uh, I, I, I won't go into any of this. Um, I think there's still a lot more to be discovered here. So um, these are kind of intriguing objects, although it's, it's all finite dimensional and, and you think, well, so it can't be terribly exciting, but I think there is interesting, uh, yeah, interesting structure and um, yeah, uh, probably more to be discovered um, there. Okay, so that is basically uh, quantum graphs. And now let me let me come to to uh, what we did in our paper, and uh, let's. Oh, hang on, no. Before we do that, uh, one more slide on quantum graphs. Actually, uh, so just a remark. Uh, I won't I won't use this uh, later on, but there is a slightly more general uh, thing you can do here. Um, Namely, instead of working with, with this canonical trace on B, one can allow um, more general uh, states. And um, so if you're familiar with uh, quantum automorphism groups, then this will be familiar to, to you, uh, the notion of a delta form. Um, so yeah, uh, this generalizes what I, what I said earlier on. And um, uh, yeah, basically the, what we do in the paper is we work with arbitrary uh, delta forms on finite dimensional C star algebras. So that um, gives a slightly more general setting and this is convenient in particular when one wants to study um, um, quantum isomorphisms um, and stuff like that. But um, I won't, I won't, uh, work in this generality in the SQL. So we will just stick with uh, traces for simplicity. Okay, so let's let's have a look at uh, Kunz Krieger algebras. So that's in a sense, um, now just reviewing um, the definitions and um, then I will slowly head towards um, what we did, the quantum version or what we call the quantum version of these algebras. Okay, so here we go. Um, so let's start with the matrix with entries in zero one. And uh, well, then the, the Kunz-Krieg algebra is the universal c algebra generated by uh, partial isometries um, SI with mutually orthogonal ranges satisfying the, the so-called Kunz-Krieger relation. Um, I won't make any further hypothesis on, on uh, my matrices here. Um, so it could be, for instance, that all the entries AIJ are zero. I won't exclude this, uh, but of course, if you don't put any, any further uh, conditions, then the algebras you will get may be very degenerate. So that's just uh, uh, one thing to keep in mind. Um, okay, so there seems to be another question. Maybe yes, go, if you go ahead. Well, um, anyway, I, I have a question. It's, it's, um, I understand that this is nothing but the usual uh, graph sister algebra for a simple graph somehow then all these relations boil down to just this one single equation. Am I correct? Uh, yeah, if you have a finite graph, I guess, yeah. with- Finite graph, sense. finite simple graph, finite simple graph. Uh, what do you mean by simple? Well, that's what you defined. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, so, okay. Again, there is the question whether you think in terms of the graph C star algebra graphs or, or yeah, uh, but basically, yeah. So here we can think of this as encoding um, uh, a graph in, in, in the sense I, I uh, defined. So yes, um, and that, that will be basically also how, how we will generalize this um, in a second. Because on the left-hand side, you just have all these vertex projections. 
Yes. And, and on the right hand side, you have, you know, the second Kunz Krieger relation. And I suppose that uh, under such strong assumptions about the graph, uh, all other relations are just automatic. Um, yeah, basically, yes. Um, mm -hmm. Let's, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so here, yeah, just two examples. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, now um, before going towards quantum graphs and their algebras, I want to do an intermediate uh, thing, namely what we call free Kunz Krieger algebras. Uh, and this is very similar to, to the definition uh, on the previous slide. Uh, just a tiny little difference, namely, we do not require the partial isometries uh, to have mutually orthogonal ranges anymore. Otherwise, um, the definition is exactly the same. And um, mm -hmm. well, I don't know, um, I guess, yeah, uh, what you what you get here is uh, sometimes this is this is really different from from uh, the actual usual Kunz Krieger algebras. Sometimes it is not, and uh, it's not completely clear uh, when exactly you get something different and when not. So certainly there is a obvious quotient map from, from this guy, from this free algebra to the ordinary Kunz Krieger algebra. And the question is, okay, sometimes this is an isomorphism, sometimes it isn't. We don't know exactly uh, when it isn't. Um, so, Christian, there are two questions. One is from yes. uh, Muge. Uh, this is the sister algebra, graph sister algebra of one vertex uh, uh, n loop graph. Am I right? So, this is a question from Muge. The, the, the Kunz algebra, O n. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And, and Guillermo, your question? Yeah, no, I, I was asking whether uh, the fact that you put uh, no um, condition north of an energy condition on the SI, does that imply that you get, uh, instead of uh, uh, the basic uh, commutative algebra of, on the idempotence, uh, a tensor algebra? Uh, yeah, I mean, you get some, some sort of free algebra, yes, but there, there is in a sense, it's, it's, yeah, it's the structure is getting more complicated uh, in general, but it's not so clear like when exactly um, things are really becoming free. So it's kind of, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know exactly. Uh, so certainly, and in some examples, I mean, you just I mean, get that, that, that's that's the the S I star S I mm -hmm. by themselves. Is it free? Uh, well, you mean like always free? <coughs> um, the free algebra on n idempotence. Uh, so the S star I S I. Well, in 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 the. Uh, Kunz case that would just be the identity, right? So, in the Kunz case, right? Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I have a hard time to to read the the uh, chat at the same time. So yeah, please, that's, if, that's tough. Yeah, I, I'll if, do it for you. I'll do it for you. Okay. So when I <laughs> yeah, if you have a question, please just ask. Um, yeah, exactly. Yes. Okay. Um, now, yeah, so that, that's, uh, well, a variant of, of uh, Kunz Krieg algebras. And as I already said, uh, in a sense, the, the question is, one question one can ask is what exactly is the relation between the two? And at least on the positive side, <clears throat> um, uh, so these algebras may not be isomorphic, but um, the canonical quotient map is always, at least on the level of K-theory, <clears throat> it, it doesn't matter. So um, the algebras are KK equivalent. And uh, the proof of this, <clears throat> I mean, basically from this example, 
with uh, free product and and the direct sum. Um, that's a well-known fact that that um, free products are equivalent to direct sums, and and this works also in a, in this setting here. So uh, adapting this argument um, works works for for these uh, Kunz-Krieg algebras as well. So they are at least on the level of KK theory. Um, they are as good as their um, proper counterparts. Okay. Um, but as I said, uh, to understand precisely what conditions on A um, guarantee that the quotient map is an isomorphism and what exactly can go wrong, I'm not so sure about that. Um, that would be an interesting question, I think. I, okay, I haven't thought about it, to be honest, but... Um, okay, so now with, with this uh, in place, let me tell you what, what our what our algebras are, what have we done? Um, so uh, let's assume we um, have a quantum graph G and um, then um, we will say that uh, quantum Kunz-Krieger family in a C star algebra D is a linear map from B, from this finite dimensional C star algebra into D satisfying two conditions. And um, okay, so if you if you see this for the first time, this will probably look a bit um, weird. Um, so what I will try to explain is that the first condition is basically say, saying that um, that uh, the generators are uh, partial isometries in a suitable sense, or matrix partial isometries, and the second relation uh, relation B is a version of, of the Kunz-Krieger relation um, that I put on, on the previous slides. So, uh, right. And okay, once you have this, then, I mean, you can form the universal uh, qu quantum Kunz-Krieger family. So the universal C star algebra generated by, by such a thing, that's what we call FO of G. Um, and it's not hard to check that this always uh, exists. So you can always um, build this, this C-star algebra just by abstract nonsense. Um, right. Now... So, sorry, can you go back to the previous slide just for a second? So in this definition, D is replaced by the free F of OG, right? Yeah, so there is there is uh, basically this this universal guy F O G will have a map S from B mm -hmm. into it, and these relations A and B will hold for for this universal map S, such that whenever you have such a quantum Kuhn's Krieger family in any C star algebra D, then there will be a unique star homomorphism from the universal guy into D. Mm -hmm. such that um, this is compatible with these maps. So, so, so you are saying that this lower case S always factors to the capital S. Yeah, yes. Yeah, sorry, I, I, I mixed notation here. I probably should have added this. Uh, yeah, so the S, uh, capital S maps from B into F O of, of G. Um, and that is in particular a quantum Kuhn's Krieger family. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Now, how does this link with, with these free Kunz-Krieger um, algebras that I just mentioned? Basically, if you take, um, if you take a classical graph and uh, turn it into a quantum graph in the way I explained at the start, then um, you can form this quantum Kunz-Krieger algebra but what you can also do is you can take the corresponding adjacency matrix and form the corresponding free Kunz Krieg algebra. And these turn out to be the same thing. So that's basically uh, what the picture is here. Um, so from a classical graph, um, what our construction does, it does not reproduce ordinary Kunz Krieg algebras, but this free analog of 
ordinary Kunstkrieger algebras. Mm -hmm. um, right, and uh, yeah, I will tell you in, in a minute or so in some examples like, um, well, what, what you get. Um, but in particular, um, as one can already see from this example with the free product, um, these um, quantum Kunstkrieg algebras, they need not be nuclear. So they, they need not be actual graph algebras or Kunstkrieg algebras. Um, you definitely get something more general. And the usual graph sister algebras are always nuclear? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I mean, like the like group point articles, no? Yes. OK. Okay. Yes, they are always nuclear. Okay. Right. Christian. Yes. Uh, are they still exact? Say it again. And um, are they still exact? Exact. Um, no, I don't think so. Um, but you could, I mean, there is in a sense, you, you could do some reduced things probably and uh, then you might get something exact um unclear uh let me just here okay do something more basic so why why do you get the same base this is like a typical computation when translating between this linear map picture and actual generators and relations and therefore i've put i've put the slide here um so uh in the quantum concrete quantum Kunstkrieg algebra, you have this map capital S and you can apply it to, um, to the basic projections. So I guess I have to call them here EI, sorry about that. I think earlier on they were called P sub V maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, so uh, you can produce generators S, capital S I by just applying the linear map S to these standard generators and then rescaling them. And then you see that that you the first relation um, in a sense in the definition. Wait, of wait, wait, and this capital N is what? Just the number of what's capital N? That's that's the the uh, the number of vertices. Let me go back okay. here. So okay. the number okay. of vertices in our graph. Yeah. Okay, sorry. good, good. Mm -hmm. um, and then yeah, you, you can just translate um, the the mm -hmm. formulas. So just working out what M star of EI is, um, and then this is a pretty straightforward calculation. So, yeah. Um, anyway, so maybe not so important to to understand the details of this, but it's it's easy. So doesn't that? So yeah, this one does not have something to do with it, but you go to the, the link to linear graph. Because you get isom uh, isometries from projections, right? Uh, so by you kind of associate isometries to projections. EIs are projections, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, right? here, that's right. But and I out think... of it, you get uh, isometries. Yes. So there's some flip here somewhere, right? So yeah, but it's I kind think... of duality. Uh, yeah, but I think this is this is rather particular to to this classical case. So in general, I mean certainly, um, yeah. So the way to think about um, these SI. So I guess we'll see uh, this uh, an example where we take a full matrix block and then uh, I guess it will become clear. Okay. Sure. So you get matrix partial isometries. Um, that that's the mm -hmm. uh, idea. Yeah, so I guess this is this is actually the next example here. So let's just take a full matrix algebra with its standard trace. And uh, then let's look at the trivial quantum graph on that, which I remind you is just given by the identity map. So X maps to X. And then plugging this uh, into the definition, what you get is uh, the following algebra. Um, so basically, again, just translating the linear map into, um, well, uh, into elements by plugging in the standard matrix units, um, you see that there are n square generators, Sij, and you see the following relations. Um, 
And the first formula is just, um, if you like, uh, saying that the matrix formed by the SIJ is a matrix partial isometry. So S, S star S is equal to S. And the second relation here, so the, the first relation that, that will always be true, um, no matter what, what uh, quantum adjacency matrix we are looking at. So we always have these matrix partial isometries if we look at a full, uh, full matrix block. But the, um, the Kunz-Krieger relation here in a sense, in this case is just saying that S is uh, normal. So S, S star mm -hmm. equals S star mm -hmm. S. Um, and uh, well, that is, um, well, that's what you get here. And uh, what can we say about this? Um, it's pretty obvious that this algebra maps onto Brown's algebra. So the universal C star algebra generated by, by the entries of a unitary matrix, because well, for a unitary, you have in particular um, these, these, these relations. And um, well, Brown's algebra is non-nuclear, so certainly um, this mm -hmm. example is, is not nuclear either. Um, what else, and maybe more interesting here is um, uh, that this algebra is also not unital as soon as n is bigger than one. And if you think in terms of um, maybe graph algebras associated with finite graphs, then these algebras are always unital. And at first it, it seems, I mean, actually we were discussing for quite a while amongst uh, the four of us, whether one should add a condition uh, making the algebras unital. And basically this example uh, more or less convinced us that that one shouldn't um, because yeah, it turns out that here, the thing we naturally get is, um, is uh, non-unital. And one can say, well, okay, I guess the conclusion here is they need not have any of these nice uh, properties, these algebras in general. Um, but uh, for, for the trivial quantum graph, we can still understand quite nicely what, what's happening. More precisely, um, one can describe n by n matrices over this free Kunz-Krieger algebra in this case, in terms of a free product of of some easy ingredients. So matrices and okay, so this star sub one denotes the unital free product. Um, so we have also seen the non-unital free product before. Here, I mean the unital one. And uh, so, as I said, this FOTMN is non-unital. So we adjoin, adjoin a unit here and um, yeah. Uh, so from this free product description, it's easy to see that that this free Kunz-Krieg algebra is KK equivalent to just functions on S1. So um, yeah, in a sense, if you think of uh, the matrix block just being a thickened version of a point, then it's maybe not so uh, unexpected to to think that you basically get the same thing as one. Uh, vertex with with uh, a loop um, attached, which would give you C of S1, uh, at least up to KK equivalence. And yeah, I've also written down the, the generators for these K groups. So this is all, um, yeah, not too difficult, let me say. And uh, the idea for, for this argument is, uh, goes back to work of McLanahan, um, uh, I'm not sure exactly from when, I think uh, maybe end of 80s. Um, uh, so yeah, we're just extending some of the tools that, that he used uh, back then. Okay, so this is trivial quantum graphs that's already uh, exhibiting some differences to ordinary Kunz-Krieger algebras, if you like. Um, but the in a sense, more intriguing example that I want to discuss here is the one associated with complete quantum graphs. So let's have a look at, at this one. So we take, again, a full matrix block, M and C, 
with its normalized trace. And then, um, as I mentioned earlier, we can put a, a quantum adjacency matrix on this by taking um, uh, a of x equals n squared times trace of x, where trace, this little tr, is the normalized trace. Yeah, I guess I've written this further up. And n squared is the dimension. OK. And then what you find by plugging this guy into, into the general definition is you get the universal c algebra with generators s, i, j, and the following relations. So uh, the first one is familiar from the previous example, just saying that we're looking at a matrix partial isometry. And the second one is, is the, the Kunz-Krieger relation. And that may look a bit um, less obvious, perhaps. But um, well, if you, if you stare at it for a moment, then maybe what you will spot is that um, this maps onto the Kunz algebra O n squared. So um, basically playing around with, with generators and relations, um, if you map, oh, I guess I have forgotten to remove some superscripts. So please ignore this uh, superscript A. Uh, this is taken from the paper where we look at uh, direct sums of matrix blocks, but here there is just one matrix block, so there is no further index. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, right, so O n squared with uh, standard generators indexed by ij running from one to n. And uh, well, why is that? Um, you can just check that, that the relations match up. Okay, so, well, and then um, you start thinking and try to understand the structure of the c algebra. And uh, we were playing around with this um, for a while. Uh, okay, I made one remark here. Um, yeah, so having this quotient map shows in particular that uh, this linear map in the definition of a quantum Wundt's Krieg algebra is injective in this case. This need not be the case in general, um, but okay, that's, that's another uh, point. Um, the, the really interesting bit, I think, is, is this result here, which uh, says that um, this map I've just explained on the previous slide is in fact an isomorphism. Um, and in the paper, we prove uh, actually a stronger result um, using this setting of delta forms. Um, and uh, basically, uh, we can show that uh, for, for an arbitrary complete quantum graph, the free Kunz-Krieger algebra is just a Kunz algebra um, if the delta in the delta form or the delta squared is an integer. Um, and um, so, okay, maybe- so Is this delta squared your lowercase n? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so, oh, hang on. Um, uh, no, no, it, it, it need not be. So that's oh. the point here. Uh, actually, it need not be. It it could be, but um, in that case, we will look. We would be looking at at the tracial uh, delta form. Um, ah, okay. So this is a, a sort of additional degree of freedom, right? It's, yes. It, it's for any. Delta yeah. squared that is an integer, the natural number. Yeah, and the thing is, um, if you write out the corresponding algebras with generators and relations, you probably wouldn't expect this to be O n. So in a sense, this gives very exotic presentations of of Kunz algebras, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, how how we got started with this was um, by uh, well, we noticed pretty much straight away that there is this quotient map, but um, in a sense to see that this is injective, maybe let me go back to to the, to the this, this one here. Um, so from the defining relations, um, 
what what comes out of uh, I mean at the start it's not even clear whether this algebra is unital to begin with, right? Even that seems not to be completely obvious, at least not to me, I have to confess. What comes out um, of the theorem is in particular that, that the right-hand side of the second relation is the identity. So that that mm. is automatic, but, um, adding to the confusion maybe, or the uh, peculiarity here, if you were to replace the right-hand side of the second relation by just saying this is the uh, identity, mm -hmm. this would give you a very, very different c star algebra because then you would have um, uh, a lot of characters. Um, mm. So yeah, there's something interesting going on here, uh, I would say. And um, so our proof, um, is kind of uh, roundabout and I'm not sure, it would be interesting to find a more direct um, argument uh, why, why this theorem is true and a more conceptual one maybe. Um, in particular also, one would certainly expect that, uh, so the theorem at the bottom, that this would hold for any delta. So no matter whether delta squared is an integer or not, but we can't, we can't prove this. Um, uh, Christian, can you show the definition of delta again? What's delta form? Uh, the delta was was the, was the number you get if you take uh, um, m m star in b. Okay, so, that one. Okay. So yeah. there should there should be a multiple of the identity and the. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'll replace the dimension. Sir. Yeah, this is related to the quantum dimension in the quantum group. Uh, yeah, okay. World. Okay, so let me just check how I'm doing with time. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, 23 minutes. Yeah, I probably won't even use up all of that. Um, so maybe what, what I will do in the remaining time is uh, just tell you a little bit about uh, quantum symmetries. Mm -hmm. um, so the thing is, um, I mean, if you if you want to understand graph algebras or or uh, yeah, then the the basic tool for studying those is using the gauge action and then uh, decomposing things and so on and so forth. Um, you can also define a gauge action here, but uh, since some of the algebras rather look like free products. Um, the gauge action is not going to be particularly useful to to describe really what's what's happening. At least, it doesn't seem to be particularly useful in general. Um, but um, on the positive side, what you uh, a new tool that that you have in the quantum setting, which really doesn't show up at all um, for ordinary quantum algebra is is that you have quantum symmetries and quantum automorphism mm -hmm. groups mm -hmm. acting naturally and uh, for for this theorem at least for the for our proof this is really the key trick um, to use quantum symmetries so let me let me tell you a little bit about this and uh, the key player here is is the uh, quantum permutation group mm -hmm. um, so just a quick recap here. A magic unitary n by n matrix is a matrix with entries in, say, a star algebra or a C star algebra, if you like, um, such that uh, all the entries are projections and all the row sums and column sums are the identity. That's um, what's called a magic unitary. And um, if you just look at a magic unitary, where a magic unitary with scalar entries, that's just a permutation matrix, um, and that's why um, I guess the terminology. So, sorry, uh, Christian, uh, your first equality is a bit puzzling. U i j equals oh, u i j. It's oh, certainly a, true, but <laughs> there's a square missing. Very good. Very good. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, right. So what mm -hmm, I mean mm -hmm. really that these uh, entries should be projections. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, then you form the universal C star algebra uh, generated by an N by N magic unitary matrix. And this turns out to be a compact quantum group as some of you may know. If you don't, um, it's not so super important for, for what I'll, I'll say, but in a sense, they encode um, yeah, a, a generalized version of symmetry um, in a non-commutative setting, let's say. Okay, and now um, if you have a finite graph, uh, well, then one thing you, you can study is uh, the automorphisms of that graph, which is just bijections of the verdict set, which preserves the adjacency relation. And again, here, um, it's kind of important that we're looking at simple graphs because otherwise you could also uh, permute edges which are attached to the same vertice, vertices mm -hmm. and, and you could no longer only describe this in terms of the vertices. So, okay. Um, and uh, well, uh, permutations, of course, you can encode that uh, using the symmetric group and uh, mm -hmm. Banika then uh, proposed the following uh, definition. Um, the quantum automorphism group of this classical graph E is um, the quotient of the quantum permutation group C star algebra mm -hmm. by um, yeah, the relation making uh, U and A commute. And here, this is really a shorthand for, for writing out the matrix multiplication of these n by n matrices and then just comparing mm -hmm. all, the, all the entries. And uh, or in more representation theoretic terms, it's what you get by um, stipulating that A should be an intertwiner of the defining representation of SN plus. Um, right, and it turns out that you get um, a quantum group uh, in A this is way. all the time the adjacent. Oh yes, okay, it's written. Adjacent the matrix. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully that's somewhere. Yeah, it's written up. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, and okay, so these these guys are interesting examples of quantum groups, actually. And um, so I won't say anything about it, but uh, in this story of um, uh, the graph isomorphism game and quantum isomorphisms of graphs, um, these quantum automorphism groups play play a key role, and um, yeah, they capture interesting interesting structure of of the graphs. And also, there is a lot of interesting questions uh, one can ask. Uh, still open questions. Um, Okay, but um, that's the definition. And now in a sense, we are uh, halfway. Um, so we, we are still looking at classical graphs. We are looking mm -hmm. at quantum automorphisms of classical graphs, but we also have quantum graphs. And um, now um, let's, we want to define also quantum symmetries of quantum graphs. And uh, to explain this, um, let's have a look at the following. Okay, I guess here, um, ideally, you, if you have some background in quantum groups, that would certainly help. I, I haven't explained here what an action is. Uh, it's a co-action, if you like. Um, and maybe suffice it to say that, that one can make sense of, of uh, the quantum automorphism group also for, for a quantum graph. So in terms of a universal object acting on the corresponding C star algebra in a way compatible with, with the quantum adjacency matrix. Mm -hmm. um, right. And um, so that's just the equivalence condition for A. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's very basically just saying that again, the fundamental representation should commute with with A, it's really mm -hmm. translating this. Um, and okay, just if you're curious, uh, so this is quantum automorphisms of quantum graphs 
you could also speak of automorphisms of quantum graphs by making this guy abelian and then or basically looking at characters of of the quantum automorphism group mm -hmm. so there's all possible combinations of putting quantum uh, in the story and um, yeah so that might be a bit confusing at at first anyway uh, so yeah okay so this is just uh, explaining uh, a bit more what what the universal property of this quantum autobosom group is um, I guess the, the key question is in concrete examples, uh, how big is the quantum automorphism group? So even for classical graphs, it's a very interesting question to, to understand um, whether this G plus of G is actually bigger than just the ordinary automorphism. Group. And um, yeah, but that's in a sense um, a different story. Okay, um, and just here to, I think this this is perhaps the last slide already. Uh, so I'm a bit ahead of time, but okay, never mind. Um, so if we have a quantum graph, then um, the canonical action on the the base algebra B uh, induces an action on this um, quantum Kunz-Krieger algebra. Um, so that's uh, just in the obvious way, just checking checking the relations. So this is not not a particularly difficult uh, result, but it is extremely useful to to have that uh, structure. And in fact, in the paper, what we show is that there is a bit more than that. Namely, one can look at uh, quantum isomorphic graphs and uh, they are connected by a so-called linking algebras and these linking algebras act on the quantum um, Kunz-Krieger algebras as well. And uh, that is really the key trick to, to um, in our proof um, of, of this theorem, uh, this weird description of ON squared. Um, Originally, the way we we uh, discovered this was by um, using some ideas from from quantum information theory, actually. So, uh, yeah, uh, and yeah, it turns out that that one can also do that without. But um, yeah, there is there is some interesting connections um, with quantum information theory as well, actually. Um, right. I understand um, that in your theorem, uh, the, the beta on the right hand side is just beta hat. Um, no. So the beta beta maps from B into B. Ah, tensor sorry, yes. Over. Okay. No, no, I take it back. No, no, yes. Indeed, B goes from B to B tensor C or G plus G. So that's what you apply to B and S. Uh, yes, and S goes from. Uh, that's because I forgot what S was. S goes from B yeah. to uh, this F of OG. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. how it is. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. So, um, what else can I say? Yeah. As I said, so interesting. I would like to understand whether there is a more direct proof. Let me go back to this. Theorem. Let me, yeah, let me show you again these relations. I would be curious if anybody can see, can spot directly why this is uh, O n squared. So if I would be very, yeah. Uh, hmm. Yeah, if anybody has any ideas, um, please let me know. Um, right, but other than that, um, I think I'll I'll just stop here. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you very much, Christian. Where do we have this uh, clapping hand uh, reaction? So the Christian question. Uh, so uh, if you take a classical graph and then quantum automorphism group, is it larger? It yeah, it can be. One, right? It can yeah, be larger, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, so for instance, I mean, the very stupid example would be just take n points without any any edges, and then okay. the quantum symmetry group would be Sn plus, which is okay, which is bigger. Yeah, but that's kind of universal. Yeah, okay. But n uh, has to be n, n lower than four, probably. Yeah, right? yeah. So if you if you go beyond four okay. or at least four, okay. that's right. Uh, one one question in in um, the usual Kunskrier uh, address uh, in KK uh, they are isomorphic uh, to sums of Owens. Uh, do you expect to have some similar structure theorem in in for these algebras? Ah, uh, good question. To be honest, I I don't know what to expect. So. I think, I mean, certainly the, we haven't looked at uh, enough examples yet to, to really understand. Um, and hey, Christian, they are not yeah. nuclear, right? No, in general, they are not. So you kind of uh, standard results don't hold, right? Yeah, but, but they can still be KK equivalent to, to nuclear things. Uh, so um, yeah, I don't know. So, I mean, the interesting, or I don't know, of course, whenever you generalize some nice structure, there, there is, in a sense, a balance. So on the one hand, you get more, which makes it perhaps interesting. But on the other hand, you will lose some of the results and techniques and all that. And at the moment, it's not clear to me whether you really get interesting things. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. but at least, yeah, okay. I mean... But there are some, I mean, at least this example of O n squared, uh, this weird presentation of it, I mean, that's kind of, uh, yeah, I guess one wouldn't have come across this otherwise, at least, um, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's maybe. And is this a weird presentation of uh, O n squared any useful? Can you apply it somewhere, do something that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, no, probably not. Um, uh, but yeah, it would be would be interesting to to understand better what the real reason behind this is, um, and probably also uh, that comes with understanding uh, more examples of quantum graphs. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I very much liked, uh, could you please show us the slide where you showed the generators of K groups? Yeah. So that was... Uh, so one slide. This yeah, one yeah, is the circle, right? Yeah. yeah. Perfect, yes. Uh, so so I, I'm, I'm wondering uh, whether you have some more, because this is just related only to this trivial uh, quantum graph. And yes. I was wondering whether you have some nice statements about generators of K groups beyond the trivial quantum graph, because one of the beauties well. of, of graph sister algebras is that not only that you almost automatically by an algorithm compute K groups, uh, but also you have some nice insight into generators. So for instance, you know that uh, the K0 will be always uh, generated by uh, vertex projections. Of course, it still can be very non-trivial, but it's only generated, but it's generated. You know that everything will come out of vertex projections. Then you also have some nice formulas, very much similar to what you wrote uh, for K1. So I'm wondering whether this statement for, for computing uh, K groups on one hand side, so I, I'm talking like quantum Rayburn Szymanski uh, and, and, uh, and more and, 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 and some formulas for giving um, generators. Can you, how far can you go beyond the trivial quantum graph? <laughs> the answer is uh, not that we know uh, any, any further than that. Uh, in a sense, I would, I would say the following. Um, so <clears throat> if you look at the definition of these what we call quantum conscrete algebras, uh, you would at first say, well, probably there's very little hope to say anything about K-theory. Um, they look look very, looks like there is not that much stru structure to, 
to work with. And in a sense, what I would say is that this example shows that maybe there is something you can do, but how, that's another question. So this is a very ad hoc example, a very simple example to, to be fair. Um, but at least maybe there's, there's more that can be done um, also in other examples. Um, certainly, I mean, for the, for the complete uh, quantum graph, since it's just O n squared, we also know everything. I mean, sure, sure. Uh, sure, yes, yes. So it'll be interesting, especially for some new examples, something yeah. that comes from uh, quantum graphs as, and, and is not really available otherwise. But at this, a priori, it doesn't look hopeless to me because uh, the way you get k groups in Reb and is by using the adjacency matrix, right? Uh, but now the adjacency matrix was upgraded to something more complicated. So uh, obviously it will not directly speed out the K groups. But yeah. It's so, there. It's part of your definition, right? What, what links graph sister algebras with K theory is part of the definition of a quantum graph. So maybe this is not so completely hopeless. Yeah. So uh, as I said, there there's plenty of open questions, plenty to play around with. And uh, yeah, I would be very curious if anybody has ideas how to how to study uh, more examples and yeah has we, anybody tried to figure out what should be meant by a quantum weighted graph oh uh, not that I'm aware um, I'm not sure Yeah. Is there anything special that happens if you assume that uh, your graphs are undirected? Um, so undirected, in a sense, that that can that can be dealt with by basically saying that the adjacency matrix or quantum adjacency matrix should be symmetric, and one can mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. make that a part of the part of the requirements. And that's also what, what people so far have mainly looked at. Uh, but certainly for, for this Kunz-Krieger type um, picture, one would not want to uh, just look at symmetric. But presumably, presumably things simplify if you assume undirected. Um, simplify to some extent. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, at least, not to an extent that that I could say much more about uh, the corresponding algebras, unfortunately, um, at the moment, at least. Let me ask you a, a very naive uh, question. I'm just thinking aloud. Um, how about uh, paths in quantum graphs? Because when you study usual directed graphs, the concept of a path, the space of all finite paths is very crucial. Uh, what happens here? Do you do just because there's some powers of IJS matrix? What's going on? Uh, yeah, so that's certainly very important when you want to understand the structure of, of yeah. graph algebras. And in a sense, uh, there's probably not that much hope that, that something like this is going to be useful because, uh, in a sense, you will have to deal with with free algebras and and in, in concatenation. I mean, it will not you have will not have as much cancellation and and things mapping to to zero as you would like to. Um, but again, that's just in a sense saying that I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. So maybe there is something one can do. Um, yeah. Good question. Yeah, because you see, it, it, yeah, you have one of the crucial theorems for Levick path algebras and then for graph sister algebras is that you you know how a basis looks like. Yeah. And no. and, and this involves paths. I mean, come on, it all comes from from path algebras uh, via Levick path algebras. Yeah. And, and 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 this is why this this is not just an abstract question. Why no, not? No, 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 no. I mean, certainly very natural question. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I agree. But it's it's just. Um, yeah, having having these matrices now, which play like the role of of uh, of these partial isometries, makes things a lot more well. Let's mm -hmm. say 
well, not not so obvious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I can I ask a question? Go ahead. Uh, I would like to ask about uh, uh, the following situation: when you have a uh, a group acting on a finite set, uh, then you can uh, trace the action and make a graph. It would be a graph where each orbit would be a connected component. Mm -hmm. um, can you see how to do this for quantum graphs? So say you have a quantum group acting on a finite dimensional c -star algebra. Can you do this? Uh, I don't think so. Um, but but just saying that I don't know and I, I haven't really thought about that. Um, the only thing that comes to my mind, but but I, I mean you're you'll be aware of that is that that uh, in this analysis of, of uh, quantum isomorphisms, um, uh, yeah, people have looked at the action of um, or quantum orbits. Um, so that is maybe at least roughly related, but uh, no, I don't think I have any anything sensible. Uh, okay. I could say okay. There. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Any other questions? I can. Yeah, go ahead. I have a question about classical uh, simple graphs. So they constitute a very basic um, level of uh, combinatorics. How far classical combinatorics of uh, simple graphs uh, can be developed in this, in this quantum setting? Yeah, yeah, that's a very interesting question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there some result which is uh, a prominent result in the, in the combinatorics uh, which can be, can be proven uh, in, this, in this setting? I say say again a result in in classical combinatorics. Yes, so so many classical combinatorics, uh, combinatorical uh, facts, are rephrased in terms of graphs. Uh, in fact, all combinatorics reduces somehow to to, to simple mm -hmm. graph theory. And and there are there are many deep uh, theorems having having consequences in all mathematics. Uh, phrased in, the, in this uh, language. So I wonder uh, what part of this combinatorics could be quantized in a sense. Mm. Uh, good question. Um, and again, the answer is I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe the one thing I can say, which is not really answering your question, um, is that um, that these quantum symmetries uh, i mean people have have studied as i mentioned uh, these these graph isomorphism games and uh, trying to to distinguish um, graphs um, up to quantum isomorphism and that's very much related to um, to to these quantum automorphism groups i mean it's all classical graphs so it's not exactly what what you're asking but the interesting thing is that it turns out that that this uh, notion of quantum isomorphism uh, has a purely uh, combinatorial interpretation. That's uh, a very nice result uh, by Laura Manchinska uh, and, and Robertson. Uh, they they show that that um, quantum isomorphism of graphs is the same thing as having the same uh, number of uh, planar embeddings, uh, a planar homomorphism. Homomorphism counts from planar graphs into the, the given graphs. And um, so that's, that's intriguing because um, it links really combinatorics, a purely combinatorial thing with something which, which a priori is, is a non-commutative um, notion property using quantum, yeah, quantum ideas. So, and yeah, people have studied uh, quantum chromatic numbers uh, and all kinds of things, but only for actual graphs. So I guess there is there's plenty of things one can try to to see uh, 
whether one can do for, for actual quantum graphs as well. And maybe playing around with noidal equivalences, that's, that would be a, a good starting point. Um, and yeah. Thank you for the beautiful response. <laughs> <laughs> answer to a different question, but never yeah, yeah. mind. <laughs> we are thinking aloud. So I have a, since we are thinking aloud, I have a minor follow-up to Tomek's uh, question. Uh, we were interesting, interested in um, the following combinatorics of, of a finite graph, namely counting uh, all paths of length k in a given graph. And, and uh, we proved uh, for what kind of graph we actually have an optimal bound for all possible paths of length k in a given graph. But now what you can do, and this is sort of into your ballpark, uh, you can encode this question in an IJC matrix because what is uh, the number of all paths of length k in a given graph? You write the IJC matrix of a graph, you raise it to the kth power and you add double entries. That's it, this is mm -hmm. the number of all paths of length k. And, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, we have a purely combinatorial uh, proof. Uh, Alex can testify, I just spent three hours uh, delivering the proof at my lecture. Uh, it's a purely combinatorial, purely graph theoretical uh, argument. Uh, but actually what, what we did was the following. First we formulated it as, as a conjecture. So sort of we considered, and this is maybe you can think about it as weighted graphs. So we replaced natural numbers with uh, non-negative real numbers. So it's sort of like saying that from uh, one vertex to another one, we have a square root of pi of edges and it. Okay, mm -hmm. not one, not two, square root of pi. <laughs> and 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 so so it, it's kind of the other direction that you went. You 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 quantized uh, vertices. Now this is no longer C zero of uh, sorry C of E zero. It's just some um, non commutative sister algebra, only finite dimensional. Whereas we keep the vertices, and now we say, well, let's replace natural numbers that count edges emitted from one vertex to another by mm, a non-negative or positive, uh, simply real number. And then the same. Uh, um, you, uh, property holds, and uh, I, I understand that recently Alex Kirvasitu proved it. So, so we have uh, we, we encode the, our combinatorial theorem for counting graphs, counting paths of length k in a classical graph. We in, we translate it in terms of identity matrix, then we make this generalization, and then it still can be proven. So this is just a follow up to what uh, Tomek was saying. It's, it's combinatorics, which was somehow taken from from uh, graphs to, to to become a certain funny linear algebra issue, but uh, it's getting more and more generalized, and uh, uh, it hooks up with more and more other things. Just a comment. This wasn't a question. <laughs> okay. Uh, do we have any other questions or comments? Yeah, actually, I do have a question. Go ahead. So. Uh... So your quantum graph is basically a bimodule, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when you construct, so, uh, so well, if you've got a bimodule, you can start constructing Kuhn-Spinster uh, uh, type algebras. How is that related to your Kuhn's uh, type algebra? That's very yeah, much good, earlier. <laughs> good, good question, yeah. Um, and uh, we don't know I guess is the answer. So it would be very natural to see whether there is some kind of, uh, I mean, you won't get an actual Kuhn's Pimsner picture, of course, but, some, no, but uh... some, something like that. Um, and uh, so I've, I tried to think about this for a little, but I didn't really get anywhere. So again, mm -hmm. another, uh, yeah. Okay, do you get the representation to Kuhn's Pimsner algebra? By, by these uh, creation things. Um, not, not, or not. Do you need uh, free products instead of tensor Yeah, products? you would have to use something like free products. It's probably. Kind of free product of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then things get a bit. Yeah. Murky. Um, but the KK equivalent. Yeah. Um, so I. I I didn't really think about this very much, but that would be certainly one thing one mm -hmm. would like to understand. Um, um, okay, yeah. thanks. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, 
If Piotr, not, Piotr, Piotr. Yes. Yes. There were some some questions or comments on the chat. Maybe you can have a look on this recent one. Uh, is my modules in another sense, for instance? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't think it is by modules in the sense of correspondence. So this is from uh, Aristides. Yeah. Well, it is. No, I think it is actually. So. Uh, yeah, it is in the chat. Anyway, I think this, this okay. uh, as much as we can discuss it sort of in the air without a blackboard, we, we've done it. Um, so let me take this opportunity to thank uh, Christian again, right, on behalf of all organizers for an extremely beautiful talk. I, I think we can justly say it. So Christian, thank you very much. This is a very, very uh, beautiful talk. We very much appreciate it. So you broke uh, our online record. Uh, you, you had 32 participants. So we are still far away from our all-time record of 80 participants, uh, which was achieved by Maxim Konsevich. That, that, uh, <laughs> that's hard. That's hard. We're getting there, but, 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 but getting this, there. This, this was this, this was getting uh, there. Getting there. Getting there for 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 you know uh, for online for this North Atlantic seminar. You are now number one. You, you had 32 participants, so so we improved the previous record by eight. Previous yeah. record was by Jacek Krajczak, 24 participants, and today you made 32. And um, yes, so uh, thank you very much for all of this. Uh, I also got a very nice email from Joachim Kunz. He very much wanted to see your talk. Uh, but, yeah, he, he but wrote I, to me. He yeah. wrote to me as well. So. <laughs> but he will get the recording. You get, and uh, Christian, please send me the slides of your talk. Okay. And even I, even I, with I'm the setting mistakes. up the page for our seminar. I'm, I'm, I'm very slow at it, but one day it will be there. And then you'll all get an email and the link to, to a page Good. of the seminar. Okay. So thanks again and uh, see you in a week. Remember, in a week, this is um, Francesco D'Andrea and will be about non commutative submanifolds. Everybody is welcome to join. Thanks, and have a nice Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgivings to everybody. <laughs> and be careful. <laughs> yes, yes, stay at home, yes. Bye-bye, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.